Hey, it's Jens. In today's video, I'm going to tell you how you can take a professional image of the human eye and the iris. Iris photography is actually one of my favorite topics in photography because you will surprise the person you take the image of every time. Normally, they have no clue how their eye looks from the macro perspective. Here is what to expect from today's video. Everything you need for the perfect iris image is any kind of macro lens and a book or like the box here to stabilize the head. So when you focus on the iris you have plenty of time to yeah, play with the settings without losing focus. Then you need any kind of light source. I'd recommend to use a small light source. For example a flash of your smartphone works pretty good or this video light. And as I did in this video, when you try to challenge yourself and take an image of your own iris by yourself, an external monitor is a big help or a flip screen if your camera supports this. Before we take a closer look on the photography techniques and the settings, here are just a few samples I took of my own iris and just to show you how difficult it might be in the beginning, especially when not stabilizing the head because the field of death is extremely small. So we have to close the aperture because at a high magnification, the depth of the iris is bigger than the depth of field. So even when setting the focus perfectly, not the whole area of the iris will be in focus. In this video footage, it actually becomes pretty clear that at open aperture, it's actually impossible to get anything in focus. At f9, it is okay, but still difficult. And f16 is a very good choice, but then yeah, you maybe need a bright light source. Otherwise, we have to fight with noise and lose all the nice details on our iris. Whenever I take pictures of irises, I always add some video footage because I really like the moment when the iris opens up or closes. And therefore, you just have to turn off the light source, focus, take a video and then turn on the light source to get this nice effect. Okay, and now let's go through my workflow how to take the perfect image of an iris. And the most important thing really is stabilization. Because when the eye is fixed, it is very easy to focus and you can use longer exposure times or less light. And then it is not so much stress for the person you shoot and the eye. So for stabilization, I normally use this box so the person I want to shoot presses its chin against the box and it works actually pretty good. You could also use just a wall or a corner of a wall which also works great. To focus I normally use manual focus because otherwise the focus could jump on the eyelashes and not on the iris. As we've seen in the video footage in the beginning of the video it is possible to focus even at extreme magnification. The video footage of my eye and this shot was like 3 to 1 magnification. That means that the width of the image is just about 1 to 1.5 centimeters. So it's a lot easier when you work with a lower magnification. So a 1 to 1 magnification lens is perfect for iris photography. So you can move the focus a little more away from the eye and the depth of field is larger and it will be a lot easier. But a 24 megapixel camera will work great when using a 1 to 1 ordinary macro lens. So how to actually cap those amazing details on the iris? And the first thing is, it really depends on the eye. I've taken images of really a lot of irises. And I experienced that like a third of all the eyes did not really have any details. So here are a few examples of eyes with extreme structures and some yeah, kind of flat eyes. So when you try iris photography for the first time, I'd really recommend to use a person which shows an extreme detail on the eye, those extreme structures, then it will be a lot easier to focus because on flat eyes it is really hard to focus and you probably won't be satisfied with the results. To boost the contrast and the local contrast on your eye image, I'd really recommend to use side light. The worst thing is like using a ring flash or something like this because front light makes the eye appear even more flat. In post-production, I'd really recommend to not change too much because otherwise the image will not look natural anymore. Normally I go to in the Lightroom, add some structure, then I go into Topaz Denoise, remove the noise and add a little bit of structure again, maybe some saturation depending on the eye and the lighting conditions, but that's it. In an older video, I recommended to use a small torch or the light of the smartphone, but even with a bigger light source, you just have to adjust the angle a little bit and you will get a clean result. When using an off-camera flash like this here, for example, 
just get sure that you don't flash directly into the eye. Of course, we don't want to damage the eye, so just get sure that you keep a little bit of distance and a large angle between the eye and the flash. The flash works great, you don't need any diffuser or stuff, and it's also pretty easy to remove the spot in post when there is reflection on the iris. So what's my favorite angle when shooting the iris? Normally, I point with the camera straight into the eye, that also got the advantage that the reflection of the lens of the camera disappears in the black parts of the eye. But it's a matter of taste. Change the angle and keep experimenting. Here are a few examples. Are contact lens a problem? Actually, it's no big deal because normally I cut out the iris and then the corners of the contact lens is gone. But sometimes contact lens make rainbow colors appear, which might be an issue, but actually I like it. Maybe it might be interesting for you to experiment with overexposed images. Therefore, I have set the flash power to max and of course use the angle from the side. Normally the iris, especially when you have a dark iris, is the darkest part on the image. So when it is totally overexposed, normally just the skin is overexposed and you can even capture more detail on the iris. So maybe you should give this also a try. Did I miss anything? Do you have any open questions? If yes, please leave a comment below and I'm gonna answer all your questions to help you to get some satisfying iris images. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you'll give iris photography a try. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next.